we just try to find uh, um, or more uh, active extracts, then we proceed, proceed the active extract to bioactivity guided fractionation. And at each step, we also screen the fractions against the relevant enzymes. So it, it, through this line or steps, uh, we try to reach out the compound or compounds uh, responsible for the relevant bioactivity, sometimes through isolating, sometimes through, you know, uh, as acute open analysis or something. So anyway, we do uh, definitely phytochemical analysis. And then uh, with the active compounds that we find, uh, we usually do molecular docking assays or cell culture assays and so on. So these are the enzymes that are uh, uh, available in our lab. So we can screen uh, natural products or herbal extracts against all these enzymes. So I'm try, uh, I will try to give some examples uh, of our study related to enzyme inhibition assays, but not only enzyme inhibition assays, uh, but also we um, do some in vivo uh, experiments, especially uh, related to neuroprotective activity. We are very interested in neurobiological activity. So we do passive avoidance tests, uh, which is available in our lab. And then uh, we also do uh, uh, neuro neurobiological assays on Drosophila melanogaster, uh, you know, the flies uh, using their brain homogenate. Of course, we also use in silico tools, especially in molecular docking experiments uh, in silico toxicity. And recently we also collaborate with some groups in my country uh, for uh, you know, screening our compounds or uh, extracts for uh, cell culture assays. So uh, one of our recent studies that I'd like to show you is, is about uh, semi-synthetic coumarin derivatives. You know, coumarin, uh, derivatives are very important, plant secondary metabolites, and they have various, very important bioactivities. So in this work, uh, which we uh, we did with uh, in collaboration with um, University of Chieti in Italy, uh, so the group in Italy, they actually synthesized the, or semi-synthesized these coumarin derivatives, and then we screened them in my lab against cholinesterase enzyme, and you can see how effective uh, some of them are. So uh, on the right side of the slide, on the corner, you can see the uh, reference drug, which is galantamine, and see its uh, IC50 value, and comparing to its IC50 value, so you can see how effective uh, these compounds are, I mean, some of them, and especially um, this one, uh, with uh, IC50 value of 1.77, etc. And after you know finding these heat compounds, then we proceed them to do uh, in silico experiments, molecular docking assays, uh, as you can see here. So we investigate the interactions between the active gorge of the enzyme uh, with the with our ligand, uh, which is our active compounds and some uh, waves of the select ligands, which are very active against the trichoinesterase. Here you can see. And um, this is another uh, in silico view uh, showing, you know, interactions of the active coumarins. And uh, we just see that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, just uh, briefly looking into uh, structure activity relationship presence of it, the oxygenated journal chain seems to be compulsory for inhibition of bitterkorn ester, as we can say. So this came out uh, actually in bioorganic chemistry two years ago. So uh, coumarins actually are quite um, promising uh, in terms of inhibition cholinesterase derivatives, which are uh, cholinesterase enzyme family uh, is quite um, uh, involved in the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. And um, the compounds available for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease uh, in clinic at the moment are uh, usually inhibitors of cholinesterase. That's why we're, we're interested in this uh, two uh, sister 
enzymes are still under trichon esterase. And in this sense, coumarins are quite promising, as I said, and uh, we keep working on more uh, coumarin derivatives, like you can see here, uh, new coumarin derivatives, uh, synthesized one by Technical University of Munich. So we test it uh, against uh, the, this compounds, we tested this compounds against coin esterase family again. So you can see uh, the, uh, the structures on your right hand. Uh, so you can see here the enzyme inhibition data. Uh, some of them are quite promising, especially um, a three or four um, or that, uh, them, uh, like compound 16, uh, compound 9, 13. And again, 16, the most, I mean, dual inhibition was caused by compound 16. And here you can see again, docking scores of these active compounds against uh, both colon esterase target size uh, as target uh, in uh, to, I mean, docked into their uh, active gorge or binding cavities. So, uh, Again, we did in silico uh, study with these active compounds. And here you can see two dimensional ligand and protein diagrams here. Uh, of course, they are connected uh, into the amino acids found in the active side of these enzymes, uh, sometimes by hydrogen bonding, some sometimes PP stat static or salt bridge. Uh, like the amino acids, you can see here how uh, how uh, strong uh, they are interacting. So again, here uh, three dimensional actually we saw the compounds sixteen and thirteen, which which were the most active ones against uh, these enzymes. Um, so we tested them on CHCY five Y cells. Uh, you know this cell line is usually uh, I mean usually used for um, determining uh, efficacy against, you know, neurological disease, especially Parkinson's disease. So uh, the active coumarin derivatives were tested in this cell line, uh, and we just uh, observed or determined the EC4 and EC5 doses of these three uh, effective coumarin derivatives as you can see here. So anyway, uh, coumarins are quite promising in this sense, but not only coumarins, we, uh, but also other uh, plant secondary metabolites we study in our lab. So but another example is calcons or and flavonoids. And here you can see uh, a series of calcons and flavonoid derivatives. This work was in, also in collaboration with uh, with Institute of Soil Science and Plant Cultivation, which is located in uh, in um, Poland. So they isolated these compounds uh, from the plant called hops, you know, Humulus lupulus. So we tested them against um, uh, esterases again, and these were the most active ones, and here you can see the IC50 values. Uh, it doesn't mean, of course, that each time we get very, very active uh, or effective inhibitors, but sometimes moderate uh, inhibition can also lead you. But these two are uh, also uh, just, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, how do you call it, shines in terms of inhibition or IC50 value. So we did ATME analysis for these compounds and I'm not going, because my time is very limited, not going into details, but just to uh, show you. And uh, this is uh, two dimensional views of these active compounds and calcon and flavonoid, calcon derivatives actually, or flavonoid derivatives, maybe you can say. Uh, we can see hydrogen bondings, PP stackings, as well as hydrophobic interactions between our active ligands and active size of these enzymes. Um, this is uh, 3D waves of the same compounds and uh, the net around the compound actually implies the electron densities for these compounds. And, um, we had published this in Python Medicine several years ago. And uh, another plant secondary metabolite 
group, saponins, uh, isolated from hernia glabra. Um, so we, uh, you know, uh, collaborated in this work with uh, uh, the group from Poland again. So they isolated all these compounds, hernia area saponin derivatives, and uh, we um, screened them against tyrosinase, collagenase, elastase, xanthine oxidase, and cholinesterase. But of course, as I said, it is not that we always expect to find a lead or heat compounds with very high inhibition. Um, so with this series, actually, we didn't observe any inhibition or maybe very low one, but that doesn't mean that they are still not very, uh, you know, they don't have any neurobiological activity. So we uh, are still testing them for their uh, Alzheimer relevant, uh, relevant gene expression, uh, anti-neuroinflammatory effect, uh, you know, A beta plaque formation is also important in Alzheimer's disease and uh, for this toxicity. And in, I mean, by through, uh, through by, uh, different mechanisms for their any uh, neuroprotective activity, we uh, just keep going on. But uh, just jumping into another, uh, another uh, area that uh, we have been working on is actually cosmetics. I am also very in, uh, interested in uh, cosmetic uh, product r &D. So these are the enzymes, uh, you know, that uh, we were screening. Uh, just a second. So uh, we follow the same route, actually. Uh, it's the same workflow uh, for cosmetic studies as well. Um, so tyrosinase inhibition, you know, it is like studied by many, many researchers worldwide. But when we studied, uh, I mean, we start to work on tyrosinase inhibition, I mean, in our uh, first uh, terms. So we had screened uh, 125 derivatives of three uh, starting compounds like alumaltol, alpha kojic acid, and chlorokojic acid. They're synthetic derivatives. And when we look at uh, alpha kojic acid, actually, this is a very well known tyrosinase inhibitor used in many cosmetic products for what purpose? For skin bleaching or skin whitening purpose. And, you know, women really like to use uh, this kind of products. But alpha kojic acid itself is also a natural product, actually isolated uh, from um, some microfungi. Uh, species, uh, so it is available as synthetically, but it is uh, in fact a fungal uh, metabolite. So anyway, we tested or we screened all these uh, compounds against tyrosinase, and we found several hits. Uh, so especially one of them in 125 compound, especially this one, cogilmethyl, uh, dichlorobenzyl piperazine, uh, name compound was very effective. So we patented it in, uh, with Turkish patent and then US patent and then European patent. Now it is going on. Uh, I mean, we have European patent, but it is also going on in different countries in EU. So um, we uh, got a silver medal uh, for this work uh, in International Scientific Invention Fair. Uh, which was organized in Istanbul uh, by our uh, Ministry of um, Industry. Uh, so it, it, this compound, the kojic acid derivative has become a, a commercially available uh, uh, cosmetic product for you know, uh, skin bleaching. Now it is available in Turkey, it is sold. Uh, and some companies in uh, abroad, they are also interested in. Uh, so geranium glabarium is another plant that grows in Turkey. So we uh, also did some search on this plant. So we prepared extract and just looked uh, uh, into the phytochemistry of this plant. And we saw that actually, for example, gallic acid and elagic acid, they were two main uh, phenolic acids. Uh, found in the extract. So we fractionated by HPLC, got six fractions. And then we also further 
uh, went on the, the, the most active fractions and did a circuit of MS analysis, which is available in our faculty. And here you can see the uh, HPLC profiles of these six fractions from uh, geranium glabarium. This is one example of the uh, 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 Q of MS. Uh, chromatograms or spectrum actually uh, like we could uh, one of the the, the the compounds that we could uh, characterize was geranium it's actually a polyphenolic compound uh, not only uh, geranium but we also uh, uh, characterized or short of the presence of allergic acid, geranium, corylogin which is another polyphenolic compound, gallic acid and kunic acid and more so um, in, in fraction six, uh, we also found a large amount of carcetin. And of course, when we screened or tested this compound, I mean carcetin against tyrosinase, we found a very, very uh, high uh, inhibition. So uh, these are the the interactions to the interactions actually showing uh, the bondings with tyrosinase active site and our compounds. For example, I can show you here the allergic acids and uh, geranium uh, as examples. Uh, what I can just uh, want, want to show you actually is that these compounds, these two compounds actually can uh, interact with the two copper atoms of the enzymes, which is located in the center of this enzyme. So they can also bind uh, with uh, the copper uh, atoms available uh, in the enzymes, which is very important for in, uh, inhibition. Uh, so are uh, corylagin and quercetin. Uh, they can also interact with copper atoms uh, located in the center of this enzyme, in the active gorge, I mean. Uh, so, um, of course, there are lots of other interactions. So we screen them again uh, by Swiss prediction program and past programs. They are in sequel screen uh, programs, as you may know. So we found, uh, for example, this is quercetin, and we found a good correlation with skin whitening effects, which, uh, uh, verifies our uh, our results uh, by this study. And this is allergic assist, and we also screened uh, allergic assist by these two programs, this production and pass program, and we also found uh, a correlation with skin whitening effects. So we can just think that these are the compounds uh, which may contribute to tyrosinase inhibitory activity of this extracts or this fraction, I can say. Um, so we made a formula of these extracts as a skin breaching cosmetic product, which contains 2% of geranium glabarium. Uh, so uh, we applied for uh, patent to Turkish Patent Institute. So um, it is almost done, I can tell you, because we applied like three years ago uh, on my name. So for skin aging, of course, we have been doing uh, more studies. So this is another example. I don't know how many minutes uh, I have left. Uh, but in other um, part of our work, I would like to just tell you about this uh, four uh, plants, Cotinus cogria, which is known as European smoke tree, Pistacia vera, you know, pistachio tree, which is quite common in Turkey, especially in the south part, uh, Garcinia mangustana, which uh, actually uh, I got this sample from Thailand uh, because it is not a natural uh, plant or fruit in Turkey. So, and with this vinifera, this is grape, and grape seed is, you know, used a lot in cosmetics anyway. So um, we screen them against elastase, collagenase, and tyrosinase. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can see some good, I mean, inhibition over 50%, maybe you can call it uh, moderate. Uh, so we did uh, uh, MTT assay uh, in fibroblast uh, for all uh, each of these extracts. Um, uh, 
So uh, you can see they are quite, they have a viability like pistachia vera percarpium extracts and garcinia extracts and, you know, vitis vinifera seed extracts. And we also tested propolis extract as well. So um, cytotoxicity uh, seems to be uh, the, the highest one uh, with the cytotoxicity is pistachia vera. Um, so significant cytotoxicity actually and viability uh, less than 80 percent. Um, the other plant extracts that we tested in entity assays uh, uh, were safer than Pistacia vera and here you can see the uh, data of uh, cytotoxicity test. And here you can see uh, the uh, effect of these extracts on collagen content uh, in fibroblasts because, you know, collagen uh, amount is important in the skin island for skin aging. So when we uh, determine the collagen content in fibroblasts when they're exposed to these extracts, uh, uh, you can see that, uh, I mean, Cotinus cogrea uh, extract as well as Garcinio man uh, mangosteen extract, uh, they are quite good in sense of uh, increasing collagen content. Uh, and here you can see others. So Garcinia extracts actually uh, it was the most uh, successful one uh, in this essay, uh, followed by Cotinus cogrea leaf and pedicel extracts. And it goes like this. Uh, as I said, pistachia vera is quite promising in terms of, of uh, enhancing collagen synthesis in fibroblasts, but it had, uh, as you can remember, it had a mm, market toxicity. So that's why it seems to be useless anyway. So we tested all these extracts also in two more cell lines, Hakat and Huex cell lines. And here I just fastly just uh, showing the graphs for all these extracts you can see. But anyway, our uh, aim was also to prepare a formulation for skin aging out of these extracts, maybe one, maybe more. Uh, so uh, we tried niosome formulations because niosome is a you know, popular uh, um, form uh, for cosmetics uh, nowadays. So we prepared the niosome forms and some very uh, you know, uh, trendy cosmetic companies also use niosome type uh, of cosmetics. So we prepared and we checked in a particle sizer, uh, which is available in our facu faculty. We checked the particle size, as you can see here. So these are the niosomes, uh, which, is, which were loaded actually with these extracts. But uh, in, uh, in, in my lab, we are not able to uh, test uh, for their efficacy as a finished products. So I'm a, a, a member and vice president of the International Scientific Board of Austrian Drug Screening Institute, which we call ADSI. So uh, in this uh, work, we also collaborated with ADSI, so they tested our liaison formulations, but the result actually indicated that the effect uh, for skin aging or inhibitions for these uh, enzymes that I, I just mentioned, uh, niosome formulations are not good. The inhibition uh, actually came down. So we that, that's why we uh, changed uh, our mind. Uh, instead of you know, making a formulation as a niosomes, we are now uh, shifting on uh, nanoemulsion or emulsion uh, formulations. So anyway, uh, this work is also going on. And in the last part of my talk, I just would like to tell you about, you know, medicinal aromatic plants are very important in terms of developing phytotherapeutics or phytocosmetics uh, and other phytoproducts, uh, I mean, medical products. So uh, 
This uh, is the product that I uh, developed the formulation. This is a multi pass spray. Uh, so uh, I, I did R&D work uh, in my lab. So I made the formulation. So I did uh, all those testing, antimicrobial, antifungal, anyway, with five uh, essential oils, especially obtained from the, the plants, medicinal plants growing in Turkey, as well as propolis. I made a formulation. So I uh, applied for the Turkish patent. Uh, and it has also beca become a commercially available uh, spray type of product uh, licensed by Ministry of Health. Now it is sold in pharmacies in Turkey. Uh, we also applied for international patent through my university. So this was uh, the first product uh, developed under my university and industry collaboration. So I just wanted to also show this product to you in the end of my talk. And here you can see that we applied for patent, but the, um, the ho uh, holder or owner of this product is not me, but my university. And we also just uh, hand over the license uh, of commercializing, commercializing of this product to a company called Terrafito. Uh, so for next five years, they will. Uh, this will be their product, and they will sell uh, under this agreement between my university. So uh, we already had three patents with uh, the kojic acid derivatives, uh, as I just mentioned. So these are the five other patents um, that we have already applied, and this year also we plan to apply for two more patents. So anyway, in conclusion, medicinal and aromatic plants are very important uh, in terms of drug discovery or cosmetic development. And the, the, the pure molecules from plants actually could be a clinical drugs. There are many examples. And semi-synthetic derivatives of these natural products can be drug candidates. And of course, they can inspire the synthetic or organic chemistry to synthesize more effective or safer derivatives of natural products. And there are very promising lead molecules uh, in this uh, research, uh, I can tell you. So in the end, um, I just would like to uh, show my collaborators. And of course, they, uh, I have to thank them all for supporting our lab, our work. Uh, and uh, in the end, I would like to thank you a lot for, uh, you know, listening to uh, listening my talk. And it was a pleasure to, to you know, uh, take place in your uh, conference. And many greetings from Ankara to India. So if there is any question, I can uh, just try to answer. Hello. Hello. I hope I, I was on time. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. I'm just finished. Yeah, I haven't seen you. This, uh, uh, I don't want to ask uh, any question, but okay. uh, I conclude something. This mm -hmm. is a good presentation. Uh -huh. okay, thank you. Uh, you, have, uh, you have given very good presentation and it's a nice and it's very. Somebody has, uh, somebody has a question. I have given the mic. Okay. Hey, he's a FRI scientist, I think. Uh, it was really a nice lecture. And I, yeah, I just want to know while making formulation, uh, what was the basis of selection of plants? Oh, okay. This question, uh, I can answer like that. Like, um, you know, formulation, uh, making formulation, I mean, uh, just not doing uh, research for science or publishing papers uh, is the not only uh, target for us, you know, or it should not be the only target for us. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, in my country, uh, there are like uh, 
207 universities throughout the country. And uh, 20 of these universities, including my university, uh, have been uh, selected as the pioneering research universities. So we, based on this selection, actually our university expect us to uh, you know, develop not only good papers, but also patents, you know, products developed under university and industry collaboration, as I've just mentioned. So they push us to that direction as well. Uh, so we have to work a lot, uh, but not only for paper, as I said, for also this kind of uh, finished products, because it, uh, this kind of uh, data or results or outcome that we have actually makes a lot of scores for our university. So uh, higher score means that higher budget uh, for as you know public university, these are important. So that's why we shifted a little bit from uh, you know publishing the paper. Of course we also uh, work for a paper, good paper but also for this kind of study. So that's why uh, that's the purpose actually, or motivation uh, that, uh, I mean, why we are a little bit shifted to this, this direction. So plans we choose, as I said, actually, uh, we sometimes do, you know, randomly, I mean, we sometimes select the plant material that we are going to study uh, randomly. Sometimes uh, we rely on, uh, the folk medicine, not only in Turkey, I mean, Anatolian folk medicine, but also we just check, uh, for example, the plant X is used for what purpose in what country. So if it is matched with our um, target, then we, you know, start to work on that plant, plant especially if it is available in, in Turkey. But we are open to any collaboration, uh, as I've just uh, shown some part, uh, some examples of our work. Uh, we collaborate with international groups. So not only Turkish plants, of course, we are open to uh, work on um, the plants growing in different parts of the world. So I don't know if I can explain myself. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my query still remains. It is based on ethnomedicine and yeah. products present there in, or you are emphasizing sizing on natural products only <clears throat> uh yeah both i mean natural products we cannot yeah. just ignore it uh, because these pure compounds are very uh, very important but uh, considering phytotherapy uh, of course uh, we rely on we rely on ethnomedicine as you said or ethnopharmacology or ethnobotany that, that kind of knowledge is very important to us as well for example now my one of my phd students uh, is working on um, five alpha reductase uh, inhibitory activity uh, which is related to alopecia so we checked all the literature available in you know, web of science, scopus, whatever. So in what countries, so what plants are used for alopecia or hair loss? So that's why now we try to select our plant species. So what I mean is what you said, yes, ethnomedicine or ethnopharmacology is quite important for us. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hi, Malki. thank you very much for your nice uh, presentation. Uh, it was really worthy for uh, our listeners. And um, uh, I'm really thankful for you to giving me uh, uh, even, uh, it was a very short notice and uh, you uh, uh, you gave uh, this kind of presentation. It was really, really appreciable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too. Thank you. Have a good conference. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, now our uh, next speaker is uh, George Lehmann, is from uh, Germany and uh, he did really uh, nice work on anti-inflammation uh, using various natural products 
many molecules here have been uh, used uh, uh, to assay the anti-inflammatory work and uh, it was uh, really really appreciable uh, because he gave me time uh, although he was very busy and i think he was you know uh, not uh, in his institution for uh, last uh, several days but uh, for this lecture only he came and uh, now he is presenting his uh, work based on phytochemicals as potential therapeutics in inflammatory bowel disease so uh, thank you george now it's time yeah. dear mr german thank you so much for for inviting me to this uh, very interesting congress um actually i try to share my my right window to the audience so could you give me please a uh, short feedback whether you see my presentation hello yes yes it is visible you can continue yeah, great great yeah thank you so much first of all i would like to apologize for being not able to to join the conference uh, personally uh, nevertheless um, our best regards from from leipzig from the fraunhofer institute leipzig to india um, i assume you fight against the very high temperatures at, at the moment uh, in your country here is is not quite hot uh, but uh, nevertheless uh, i hope you all can enjoy the, the conference and I like to give you some uh, important results from, from our own research. And finally, I, I want to like, I'd like to thank especially uh, Dr. Simbal for, for inviting me. So, okay, uh, what's the topic of my talk? Um, we use phytochemicals as potential therapeutics in inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease, and there are actually two main uh, forms of this disease. This is ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, are chronic collapsing inflammatory disorders of the gastrointestinal tract. So far, the etiology of inflammatory bowel disease is not completely understood. Uh, genetic predisposition, environmental factors, uh, a special immune response, and in recent years, uh, predominantly the role of the microbiome is discussed in etiology of IBD. So here I want to show you a very short uh, summary of the, the current knowledge of the pathogenesis. And here, as mentioned, gut, the gut microbiota plays an important role in, in pathogenesis uh, of IBD. Um, and here, as you can see in the left picture, in the normal situation, there are several symbiont uh, uh, um, uh, microorganisms in the gut. Um, first of all, unclassified bacteria, which uh, induce a, a special type of immune response. This is uh, characterized by tolerance against most uh, um, dietary antigens. And this is also characterized by a special immune response, which is a moderate Th17 and a moderate Th1 response. Uh, in, in recent years, as a new type of, of um, uh, subtype of the helper cells, this is so-called Th71 cells. This is not yet mentioned in the review, in this review from 2013. This is actually a, a, a subtype of, of, the, of the herbal cells between uh, these both cells. And all these three, TH17, TH1, and TH71 cells, uh, produce a lot of interferon gamma and uh, R17 and, and trigger uh, the inflammation. And uh, when I said uh, this is a moderate response, this means that these bacteria induce uh, only a uh, um, a moderate immune response to this uh, bacteria. Moreover, the barrier function of the uh, epithelial barrier in the gut is very important. This must be um, uh, complete, and uh, there shouldn't be any lesions lesions in, in the gastro uh, in the barrier. Uh, and for this function, a couple of um, 
um, anti-inflammatory, uh, a couple of antimicrobial peptides such as RAC3 or in human defensines or catalysidines are necessary to um, control this bacteria. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, beneficial bacteria, the probiotic bacteria, for example, and these have also an important function to induce uh, another subtype of T helper cells, these are T-Rex cells. And a very important uh, cytokine in this orchestra, this is interleukin-10. And also they induce uh, antimicrobial peptides. On the right-hand side, we have the situation in chronic inflammation. And as you can see here, we have uh, um, a strong uh, influence of pathobions, of pathogenic bacteria, which uh, became become dominant over the other types. And here we see, and uh, this is dramatic, uh, a strong increase of these cells, Th17 cells, Th1 cells, and also the other, the third population, which is Th71 cells. And moreover, um, and this is also traumatic, traumatic um, T-Rex cells uh, and I-10 production is almost abolished and also the, the um, production of uh, anti-inflammatory uh, peptides is uh, strongly diminished. This is the situation we have in chronic inflammatory bowel disease and there are a lot of therapeutic uh, approaches in, in the last decades, uh, which try to, to um, um, fight against this uh, uh, disease, which is, and I have forgotten to mention this, um, there's a strong increase uh, in, in uh, um, developing countries at, at the moment in, in the US and in Europe, um, there is a, a moderate increase but uh, in, in, in African uh, countries, but also I think in India, uh, there is a, a strong increase of that. Sorry, I go back here. Sorry. So uh, current therapeutic options, inflammatory bowel disease, such as uh, cortico, uh, uh, glucocorticoids, azathioprine, and uh, in the last two decades, more and more biologics, uh, uh, also biosimilars for these biologics, uh, for example, anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha, this was the first target, um, but in recent years, more and more uh, uh, anti-IL-12, interleukin-12 and interleukin-23. Um, these are often uh, expensive, only partially effective and more or less uh, symptom related under certain conditions associated with uh, strong adverse effects. Thus, novel, more efficient, causal, and well-tolerated therapeutic options are urgently needed in, in inflammatory bowel disease treatment. However, until now, there's only limited knowledge on the efficacy of, of phytopharmaceuticals in IBD treatment, and therefore we have studied the therapeutic capacity of, traditional, of a traditional German phytopharmaceutical uh, called Aramating Tour N. This is produced by an old uh, company in Germany, uh, Bombastus, is uh, located near Dresden in Eastern Germany. Uh, this uh, was founded in, in 1904. And um, moreover, we have also, uh, to mention, to explain this a little bit more detail, uh, this uh, Aramating Tour combines two uh, phytopharmaceuticals, uh, sage, which, which is uh, saliva officinalis, and bitter apple, which is uh, citrullus uh, hulosynthes. And moreover, we have studied two known non-toxic ligands of the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And this is indole-3-carbinol and quercetin in a mouse model of chronic dextran sulfate sodium colitis. This model was uh, adapted in our laboratory, uh, mostly uh, the acute DSS colitis model is used worldwide. Nevertheless, in our, our uh, in my mind, uh, the, the acute DSS model is not quite appropriate to study the uh, chronic inflammatory response in, in IBD. So we have adapted this model to a chronic uh, model. 
So some more information to these phytochemicals we have used in your three carbinol uh, is all the lysis product of bubopacicine, uh, a, a compound that occurs naturally in large amount in a number of vegetables of the brassica genus in particular and in broccoli. Um, quercetine is a flavonoid which is widely distributed in, in plants and uh, very strongly in allium sepa. And as mentioned already, uh, sage and bitter apple, uh, this is a combined drug in, in, in the relation uh, five to one, uh, sage to bitter apple. And these are both ethanolic extracts, 68% uh, volume per volume uh, in the case of salvia officinalis, flowers, this is important. This is out of flowers from saliva, uh, salvia. And uh, on the other hand, 42% uh, volume per volume citrullus colosynthes uh, fruits. Here are the fruit extracts used. So, what is our working? Was our working hypothesis? Uh, a rue hydrocarbon receptor is actually the uh, abbreviation of, of this, is a long word. Uh, uh, HR activation by dietary ligands or combined sage and bitter apple extracts exert therapeutic effects. On inflammatory bowel disease. And our study design was proving the therapeutic capacity of the dietary HR ligands in a mouse model of chronic DSS colitis uh, in black six mice. These are C57 black six mice or pulp C mice. Both of these mice models were developed in, in our laboratory. Here, shortly overview. I won't uh, bore you with, with these uh, details uh, in, in, in the experimental, experimental protocol. Uh, only for short information, the mice uh, get uh, DSS, dextrans of heart, uh, via uh, drinking water. And uh, for control, for, for uh, investigating a little bit more the mode of action, uh, we have also um, used HR knockout mice uh, to show whether we can um, prevent uh, the, the possible uh, potentially observed uh, therapeutic effects uh, without functional AHR. This is the same for biopsy mice. Uh, this is very similar. The biopsy mice uh, is is biopsy mouse is a little bit less sensitive to uh, this DSS. Uh, therefore, the DSS. Um, uh, concentrations used in drinking water is a little bit higher, as you can see. Um, I go back once more. Here we, we use 0.5% and 1%. And uh, actually, I have to explain this uh, fact. Uh, the, the, special, uh, the special feature of this chronic uh, DSS model we have developed is that we have three phases. And uh, one phase is, is a higher DSS uh, dose. This is 1%, 2%, 1% for, for black six mice, or 2% for biopsy mice. Then uh, is followed by a lower uh, DSS concentration. And then again, a higher DSS, DSS concentration is followed up to day 25 or 13. Um, this is completely different to, to the acute DSS model. Uh, this is using seven or eight days uh, high, uh, relatively high DSS concentration, followed by a phase of about 10 days with drinking water al alone. So far to the model. Now I want to show you um, very shortly the main most important results from these studies. And uh, uh, first of all, we have analyzed uh, the clinical parameters showing the cause of, of the disease. And as you can see here, um, the, 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 the circle, the empty circle is this Y-type mice without DSS. That means these are healthy mice. No, there's nothing happens to this here. And uh, here the square, uh, empty square is Y type uh, with DSS plus, uh, plus vehicle control. Um, the triangle is, is uh, a, a therapeutic control. This is 6 theoguanine. Uh, this is often used in, in those models. Uh, and the reverse triangle is quercetine, 50 milligram per kilogram 
and uh, the rhombus is uh, DSS plus uh, um, plus uh, either three carbonyl in 20 my, my, uh, milligram per kilogram. And as you can see, uh, all the therapeutics, uh, the control 6 tubranine, uh, but also the phytos are able to, to um, reduce, significantly reduce the clinical score compared to the uh, vehicle control. Um, the cumulative uh, clinical control over time uh, is given in this graph, and here you can also see a, a significant reduction of all three therapeutics, sextilguanine, quercetin, and endothelial uh, compared to the vehicle control. On the other hand, on the right hand side, we have the result from the HR knockout mice. And here it's clearly seen that nothing happens. Uh, there's no difference uh, between quercetin in the three carbonyl compared to the vehicle control. So um, we have a clear evidence that the uh, uh, observed uh, improvement in this model uh, should be mediated by AHR. Okay, and uh, this is only for illustration to show you what, uh, what contributes to this cumulative score. Uh, this is um, the uh, stool consistency score, the hemorrhage, uh, colonic hemorrhage score, and the, the body weight score. And all these uh, more or less show these uh, patterns. We have also uh, investigated the mice, monitored the mice by uh, colonoscopy. Uh, and also this investigation uh, shows uh, a clear picture. I hope this can be seen uh, on the screen. Um, uh, 6-theoguanine, quercetin, and indole 3-carbinol uh, led to improvement of the inflammatory uh, situation uh, in, in the gut directly. Here's the DSS vehicle control. And another test uh, also showed uh, this uh, benefit this was the Fitz dextra, uh, Fitzy dextran uh, gut permeability uh, test. Here, the mice get um, uh, were fitted with, with uh, uh, a fluorescent dye, Fitzy, and uh, then uh, if there is a, there are big lesions in the gut, you can uh, measure this uh, uh, the permeability of this uh, permeability of this uh, uh, fluorescent dye. In, in the serum. So after a few hours, uh, we found uh, this uh, was sent dye in the serum. And at, as you can see here, there's a very high amount of its C dextran uh, in the vehicle control. And this was uh, reduced in the 6 tuberine, but, but also the quercetin and in the 3 carbinol. And uh, this was true for day 7, day 40, and uh, day 21. So, and uh, last but not least, uh, the histopatho histopathology, uh, the histopathological uh, score is also very important um, parameter to, uh, uh, as an endpoint in, in this model, and also the colon length, because we have a fibrosis uh, after uh, this inflammation in the gut, and so the, in, a, in a strong or um, the length of the colon is proportional to the uh, extent of the uh, inflammation in the gut. So if you have a high inflammation, you have a very short colon. First of, but first let's have a look at the histopathological score. And here the vehicle control shows a high score. This means that we have a, a strong uh, this uh, destruction in the gut is the very uh, regular normal situation of the gut. This is a, a cross section. Um, this looks a little bit different in the HR knockout mice. Um, in, in, but uh, we have a very uh, traumatic situation in the vehicle control. And uh, this is uh, in part uh, restored with 6 2 quercetin and also in the 3 carbinol. Interestingly, what we can see here with the two phytos, it is not uh, uh, seen in that dimension in the 6 2 positive control. We have a, a, a big uh, um, infiltration and proliferation of immune cells here in, in the gut wall, in the golden wall. 
And let's have a look to picture C down right. Uh, this is the colon length. And here also the colon length with, with the vehicle control is very shortened, very strongly shortened. And this can be restored in part with all three therapeutics. Um, and uh, with the HR, with, with the HR knockout mice, uh, we couldn't get uh, this, um, this result. Only uh, uh, in, in the case of quercetin, interestingly, we had also a restoration of this um, guard colon mass. So, moreover, to the mode of action, we have uh, investigated some uh, cellular infiltration uh, patterns. And what we have found is uh, uh, that um, so, uh, different inflammatory cells, uh, such as neutrophils, macrophages, were, uh, were reduced after therapy. And this is also the case in all three uh, therapeutic situations. Um, but also the interesting cells, which are one of the subpopulations of the helper cells, which are important for uh, inflammation, the uh, mentioned TH17 cells, um, were reduced. It's not that uh, prominent, but uh, nevertheless significant. What was what would, uh, was reduced uh, in all three uh, therapeutic approaches. On the other hand, uh, look at this picture, please. Uh, the T-Rex cells, or regulatory T cells, which are very important to keep the uh, uh, um, homeostasis in the gut. We have a restoration. Here is the vehicle control and all three therapeutic approaches. We get an um, increase of the number of T-Rex cells. And this is also not, uh, not seen in the age knockout mice. Uh, this is not of that big importance. Nevertheless, B cells and plasma cells were reduced. And uh, this is uh, important um, tie junction, the very left downside. Uh, tie junctions uh, were restored. So if you have lesions in the gut, there is a uh, destruction of tie junctions, which um, keep the, the epithelial cells uh, to each other. Can have a strong uh, barrier function, and here uh, this is destroyed. The, these uh, tight junctions are destroyed in the DSS vehicle control, and this is also restored with all, all three therapeutic approaches. Let's have a short look to the uh, sage and bitter apple uh, results, and uh, also here to make a long story short, uh, the clinicus. A score could be uh, restored with different concentrations, doses of this um, sage and bitter apple, this abbreviation SBA. For that, um, here on the right hand, left hand side, we see the PBS or the vehicle control. There uh, is um, yeah, this is the clinical score from the vehicle control, and here is the clinical score, which uh, becomes uh, better with the therapeutic um, uh, uh, this, uh, um, treatment with these uh, SBA doses. Also, the uh, con stool consistency blood score was improved, shown in these pictures. And also, the body weight is dramatically improved uh, by all three doses uh, from the sage and bitter apple extract. Uh, moreover, the sage and bitter apple extract also ameliorated the pathology in, in the colon tissue shown in the histology features, uh, but also in the colon lengths. Uh, you can see uh, sex theoguanine compared to the vehicle control, but also uh, in a dose dependent manner with the best result from the lower dose. Interestingly, we get uh, a a reduction of the or, or improvement of the colon reduction uh, compared to the vehicle control. So let's have a look at uh, the inflammatory situation um, in this stage and bitter apple model. And also here we see some interesting uh, uh, results which 
differ in part to the uh, inversely carbinol and quercetin result, in, especially in case of the macrophages. Uh, in, in the other picture, we have seen also a reduction of macrophages, uh, but here we see a restoration uh, induction of macrophages uh, compared to the uh, 6 theogen guanine positive control and uh, also much higher, in a lot of cases, much higher than the uh, uh, vehicle control. We do not completely understood what, what that means, but we think uh, that this contribute actually to the um, heating situation in this model. Um, also, the neutrophils are uh, uh, decrease. This is similar to the other model. The helper cells are increased, but here is no differentiation to the type of the helper cells. So this cannot completely be explained. And uh, this is important. Um, COX-2 cytooxygenase, a very important uh, enzyme in the inflammatory cascade, uh, can also be uh, decreased uh, in part by the lowest SPA concentration. Another interesting uh, control is uh, was well, is, is concerning the the goblet cells. Goblet cells and, and mucus production is an important feature of of inflammatory bowel disease. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see here, uh, the past staining is a histology, so chemical staining for mucus. Um, we can see that uh, in comparison to the um we do not get uh, a decrease of the mucus production here. So this actually do not, uh, this, this phytotreatment do not um, interfere with the function of these uh, mucus producing cells. Nevertheless, the number of goblet cells uh, is also uh, increased, uh, similar to the exterior one. And uh, finally, uh, the tight junction proteins uh, were also, sorry, uh, induced. Uh, here we have shown four tight junction proteins, claudine one, uh, claudine four, so one, and opludine, and all were uh, uh, increased compared to the vehicle control. The best result was found for claudine one. And uh, I think this was the final picture to the mode of action. Um, SBA uh, reduced expression of inflammatory cytokines in the colon tissue and uh, also other, other inflammatory markers such as uh, CXCL1. This is a chemokine. Uh, this is reduced compared to the vehicle control and also to interestingly to the 6 guanine control. And uh, interleukin, interleukin Beta-1, which is the most important inflammatory cytokine, uh, could be reduced by all treatments. But uh, I-10, which is an important factor for controlling the inflammation, uh, is induced. And here we have also the most induction, uh, most uh, the strongest induction with the lowest SPA concentration. Uh, we have tried to, um, to investigate whether this sage and bitter apple um, effect has something to do with the AHR induction. Therefore, we have uh, utilized the reporter gene assay in, in HEC293 cells. And indeed, we could see that uh, several um, uh, um, uh, modulations of this uh, uh, formulation, sorry, of, of this uh, sage and bitter apple extract can induce uh, the HR transcription activation. So let me summarize and conclude the data. Both treatments with quercetin and industrial carbinol significantly reduce clinical symptoms in chronic DSS colitis. Um, the therapeutic effect of quercetin and industrial three carbinol was characterized by decreased histopathological scores indicating tissue healing as well as reduced inflammatory inflammation and fibrosis. Treatment with indole 3 carbino and, and, and quercetin reduced the number of infiltrating uh, neutrophils shown by myeloperoxidase and macrophages. 
and uh, even more effective than 6 tier guanine positive control indicating an anti inflammatory effect. Treatment with an indole 3 carbino and quercetin reduced the number of pro inflammatory TH17 and TH71 cells and restore the number of T-Rex cells, which suggests, suggesting that quercetin and indole 3 carbino can restore the immune homeostasis in the gut. And treatment with indole 3 carbino and quercetin uh, restored also the Claudine 1 uh, expression, which is an important uh, uh, junction protein to the level observed in healthy animals, indicating restoration of the gut and the, and the, the uh, epithelial barrier. And none of these effects observed after administration of the both phytos was observed in age or deficient mice, indicating that the therapeutic effects at both compounds were age or dependent. Based on these results, HI activating phytochemicals should be considered as an alternative of supplementary options or, or supplementary option for IBD therapy. And let me also conclude the SH and bitter apple uh, results in the chronic PSS colitis model treatment with a combination of sage flowers and bitter apple fruits um, significantly reduce clinical sym symptoms in a dose dependent manner. The positive uh, uh, therapeutic effect of SPA was characterized by a decreased histopathological score indicating tissue healing. The number of neutrophils, the expression of the neutrophilic attractant, chemokine, CCL1, KC, and the expression of uh, inflammatory markers was significantly reduced in colon tissue. And in contrast, uh, sage and bitter apple extract treatment caused to the food with macrophages and induction of anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-10 in colon tissue, possibly in an HR-dependent manner. Based on these results, SBA should be considered also as an alternative or supplementary option for IBD therapy. Uh, and this is a final graph, uh, uh, graph uh, uh, graphical uh, abstract. Uh, showing that uh, if all these um, uh, important functions can be restored, the dysbiosis found in IBD can be completely changed to the homeostasis in the normal situation. These are uh, my acknowledgements. Uh, most of the data were generated by my uh, 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 co-workers Dr. Maximilian Hoffmann and uh, Ms. Sina Riemschneider uh, in their PhD works, uh, but also uh, these colleagues, Dr. Urs Nanina, Dr. Alexander Seidel, Maria Thiele, Madeleine Branden, Janine Haupt uh, have uh, significantly contributed to this work. And two of our collaborators is uh, Professor Hauschild from the University of Leipzig and Dr. Weber from a pathology uh, company from Switzerland, Anapath. And I uh, thank you very much for your interest. I'm open for questions. And uh, here are my contact data if uh, anybody has interest to collaborate with us. Hello. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'm giving a mic to the chair persons and other dignitaries who's present in this session. It's a presentation from Professor Jorgen from Germany. He described all the phytochemicals action of, on different inflammatory bowel diseases. First, I would like to thank to Dr. Jorgen and, uh, and his team. And people who want to ask any question, please ask Dr. Vinay. You want to ask something. Thank you for nice lecture. I have a question. You have used quercetin and indole 3 carbinol in mm -hmm. one of the clinical assay. And in another, you have used ethanol extract of salvia and citrullus. So, yes. what was the basis to take quercetin and indole 3 carbinol while we are testing natural products from salvia and citrullus? Do you think that these are the source of quercetin and indole 3 carpinol? And if they are independently, they, they are active, then why we are using the plant extracts? And which, which one is better in your opinion? 
in terms of clinical trials. Okay. Thank you so much for these interesting questions. Uh, le let me start with the last question. Um, uh, actually, um, to be honest, the most the, the most interest from our side for a um, clinical trial is sage and bitter apple extract. And uh, I would explain this, that there are two uh, main reasons for that. Uh, one is that this, uh, I've mentioned, is a traditional truck uh, in, in Germany. And this is used for many years for, for uh, um, acute diarrhea. So there's a good chance to, to get this, um, uh, the permission for this trial very, very quickly. On uh, the other hand, uh, we have uh, a lot of tox data, yes, uh, in, for this uh, phyto. So we assume that there are no, nearly no adverse effects also in men. Um, uh, it, it, this is interesting because uh, uh, um, colocynth uh, is, is known to, to make toxic effects, but in this combination uh, and in this dosing, uh, we think uh, we have a two component system. The first is a colocynth uh, uh, action uh, to clean the gut you know, from the pathogenic bacteria. And this then uh, we have the uh, flavonoid um, um, effect from, from saliva, which is probably um, to restore or to, to downregulate the, the inflammation. Uh, actually, we have applied, or uh, we have tried to apply it for a clinical trial, but uh, this was not. Um, quite successful so far because the company, and this is a special, uh, a special situation, uh, the, the company is a, is a phytochemical company and they are not really happy about animal uh, uh, experiments, uh, but the authorities asked us for doing su uh, some additional uh, animal experiments uh, in terms of uh, chronic uh, toxicity. This has not been done. The uh, acute uh, and subacute toxicity studies have been done for many years, but not the chronic. And, and therefore, we are in, in discussion with this company. Coming back shortly to the other questions to uh, indole 3 carbinol and, and uh, quercetin. Uh, here, we have two clear candidates, uh, phytochemical candidates, uh, which are known to be natural dietary uh, HR ligands. The problem is that we are not able to uh, get a patent for, for these uh, two drugs because these are known commonly and it is not able to um, make a patent with this. Um, therefore, we try for, for two years, uh, we try to synthesize um, similar substances uh, or create similar substances in, in, in uh, silico and also to find that this is a kind of collaboration also to Dr. Zemwal uh, to find new phytos which were shown also to be clear uh, HR ligands uh, but the intellectual property uh, is open for that. This, this is a, a, actually an important point. Uh, the, and the third question, uh, our um, um, reporter gene assay uh, has shown that uh, probably also the action of the sage and, and bitter apple extract is mediated at least in part by HR activation. To our big surprise, uh, the most, uh, most or strongest uh, action did not came from, from, from the um, from the sage uh, extract, but from the bitter apple extract. Uh, my idea or our idea was that uh, sage and here the flavonoids um, were responsible for the effect, but nevertheless, uh, the most, uh, the strongest HR activation came from the colosin component. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really uh, thankful to you for uh, 
accepting my invitation uh, to deliver a lecture it was really nice uh, and uh, definitely our audience uh, will be benefited by listening uh, you uh, really really thank you yeah uh, thank you you're welcome and uh, enjoy your your conference and um, yeah as i said best regards to india from leipzig uh, <laughs> i will invite you again thank you very much Bye-bye.